So now what about this kinetic energy? Okay, so here I'm just gonna, I'm throwing some equations at you. You're not gonna have to memorize these equations, um, but this is kind of a plug and chug, okay? So the kinetic energy of a gas, um, this is the equation, it's three half times RT. So as you can see, when temperature gets bigger, the kinetic energy gets bigger, okay? Um, also that we can calculate the root mean square. So root mean square is just a fancy way of doing an average. It is a type of average, okay? So average velocity or root mean square velocity is given by the equation square root of 3RT m. But now to use these equations, the units here are a little bit tricky, okay? The molar mass has to be in kilograms per mole, and the flavor of R we use has to be 8.314 joule per mole K. This will become, I think, a little bit more obvious as we move through the course, as we get into talking more about energy. But for now, what I'm going to tell you is R, this has to be this flavor, 8.314 joule per mole K, and our molar mass has to be in kilogram per mole. So how do we use this equation? Okay, calculate the RMS velocity of nitrogen molecules at 300 Kelvin and meters per second and miles per hour. Okay, so the molar mass of nitrogen, so the book uses that fancy M, is 28.00 grams per mole. I need to make that a kilogram per mole to use in this equation. So there's a thousand grams and one kilogram, um, which means the mass we have to use is point, uh, so one, two, three, point zero two eight zero zero kilograms per mole. Okay, and I'm going to show to you right now how these units work out. So the VRMS equals, it's going to be three times 8.314. So one joule, this unit joule, in our dimensional analysis is actually a kilogram times a meter squared divided by a second squared. You don't have to memorize this. I'm putting it on here so that we can see it. So this unit gets crazy. So that's 8.314, check it out. Kilograms times meter squared divided by second squared divided by mole divided by K. It's a crazy set of units in this equation. But follow with me here. It's three times all that stuff times, uh, we used 300 point Kelvin, so three sig figs, and now divided by the molar mass in kilograms per mole, 0 0.02800 kilograms in a mole. And then look, this is all square root. Okay, so let's check out the units. So the kilogram, or excuse me, the Kelvin cancels the Kelvin. The kilogram cancels with the kilogram, and the mole cancels with the mole, and the unit that I'm left with here is a meter squared per second squared, all square root. So that's going to give me answers in meters per second. So all I have to remember is use the right flavor of R, 8.314, and mass has to be and kilogram per mole. And I could calculate the velocity of any molecule um, based on what temperature that molecule is. So let's do it. There's a, it's a crazy number that we end up getting. So three times 8.314 times 300 uh, divided by 0 0.028. And I gotta take the square root of this whole thing. That button right there, yes. Uh, that would be 517, 517 meters per second. That is crazy. That's a crazy velocity. I'll show you how crazy that is. There's roughly 1,600 meters in one mile, and there's 3,600 seconds in one hour, I get 3,600 because 60 seconds in one minute, 60 minutes in one hour, 60 times 60 is 3,600, okay? So uh, let's do it right here. Uh, oops, I could have left that in my calculator. That's okay, 517 
times 3600 equals divided by 1600 equals yep so 517 meters per second is the same as 1000 uh, 160 miles per hour yes this is for real okay molecules move incredibly fast right now it's about 300 kelvin it's a little bit colder than 300 kelvin but all the same there's nitrogen molecules zipping by me at a thousand miles an hour seriously okay so what is the significance of that number i'm going to come back to these numbers in a little bit all right and talk about the significance but mostly what i also want to make sure we remember okay these numbers are they give me the average okay and i'm not going to give you the formula for um how we calculate you know the non-average like any random observation that's actually what i teach in my upper division senior level class physical chemistry we get into the physics of chemistry all this good stuff but let's talk about what this average means okay so here is a graph that i want to show you let's focus on the one on the left for now okay notice this has a distribution of velocities so it, it's a bell curve of velocities that's where we get the average from okay the average velocity of any of these molecules is going to be given by this peak value right and check it out uh, if i trace that all the way down you know at 300 kelvin we calculated that it was roughly 500 meters per second well there you go right and notice that there's a distribution about those velocities okay and also notice as you increase the temperature not only does the distribution widen so it gets more chaotic so there's more spread so that's that's what we should interpret so like if i have a gaussian or if i have a distribution that looks like this versus one that looks like this okay this bigger one has more spread about the average so things as far as you know the molecules it, it's more chaotic there's more randomness going on okay i also want to point out too now so these are what happens with different temperature so the velocity increases but now what about these molecules the difference in mass right so o2 into helium hydrogen and this would be a distribution of their speeds all being at the same temperature and what you notice the hydrogen and the helium these two are the lightest compared to nitrogen and oxygen so for the same given temperature they move much much faster okay this is actually why hydrogen escapes our planet did you know that eventually all h2 will make it out to space it moves fast enough that gravity can't hold it down same with helium all right so any amount of helium or hydrogen um, not in a balloon right but any just like if i could exhale helium it would eventually leave the planet it moves so fast it cannot get captured by gravity okay but now you look at oxygen and nitrogen and they're really similar okay well now getting into the significance okay of this number this 517 meters per second well as it turns out the speed of sound the rate at which sound travels at atmospheric pressure is a mere 353 meters per second but look at all these velocities dude they're like way higher than that so what is the significance of this well the significance is the following okay when i have um so i'm going to try to make a new graph i might need a new page but for now let's suppose i have some distribution of speeds okay there's the velocities and then here's my fraction of molecules i'll just say p for population or fraction okay 
when um, and so this 353 you know it's actually going to be like somewhere around in here okay so it's it's kind of somewhere in the middle of this distribution it's not quite the middle because we actually calculated that um, you know for nitrogen it's actually more like 517 but again there's a pretty big spread in these velocities okay well as it turns out the speed of sound is actually related to how fast pressure waves from a given vibration can collide with each successive molecule, right? So in my voice right now, um, let's see, can I add a new page? I'm going to add a new page at the end, okay? So here, like, I am blabbing away. So here's, like, my mouth and teeth and so on, right? And this is actually a pretty good drawing. Um, here's my nose. Okay, so when I'm talking, bah, right? I'm making these vibrations. I'm actually vibrating the air in my trachea, okay? So that makes a wave front, which collides with the molecules in the air. And each wave front is actually a result of collisions with the next molecules, okay? And so we know that these molecules on average are actually moving quite fast, okay? 500 meters per second, 1,000 miles an hour, okay? Well, the speed of sound, the speed at which this is transmitted is just a little bit slower than that. And that's because not all of these molecules that are in the air that are transmitting my sound, they're not all moving in the same direction. As I'm going to show you in the next couple slides here, these molecules are all like moving in this kind of random orientation. They're all moving around constantly all the time. So the speed of sound is just slightly less than the average speed that they're traveling because they're not like lined up in this perfect like 500 meters per second, go, like a bullet, right? They don't go straight off like a bullet at 500 meters per second. They're going in this random direction. Okay. So that's why the speed of sound is a little bit less than um, what the molecule's velocities are. And now, as far as what that means for maybe something you're more familiar with when we talk about the speed of sound, if an object, like an airplane, right, or a jet, travels faster than this, it's slipping between those molecules. It's moving faster than what the molecules themselves can move. And it creates a sonic boom as a result. It's really cool. It's a really cool phenomenon, this whole idea related to speed of sound and the fact that it's actually these molecules zipping along that's transmitting sound for us. So of course that means there's no sound in vacuum. There's no sound in space. And any science fiction show you've seen where you can hear the explosions or lasers, pew, 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 like stuff blowing up in space. Not real. Can't happen. Cannot have sound in space. Can't be done. Okay. Um, and as you might also guess, um, at a higher pressure environment, um, the sound is moving even slower because of the density of those molecules, you have to have even more collisions to move that wave front so it slows down just a little, or excuse me, I said it backwards. It speeds it up because of the density, there's, there's more of those molecules to advance that wave front. So if you've ever gone underwater with like your friend and you, you look at each other and you shout, it's kind of weird, right? Because the sound is getting to you faster than what you're, you're used to. Okay, 